a sport defined by pure adrenaline. I'll say. <laughs> I fly. I stand on the edge of a cliff and I fly. Go. And pure thrill. And you look down there, you see the earth coming up, you see the trees getting bigger. Carries the ultimate risk. She was just falling and falling. We knew that there was a problem and I heard people saying pull. When a veteran base jumper plunges to her death, what went wrong? El Capitan, towering a hair-raising 3,000 feet over Yosemite National Park in Northern California. It's a base jumper's dream, a perfect launch point in a death-defying sport that hooks its true believers with a blast of adrenaline and the feeling of human flight. Base jumpers leap off buildings, antennas, spans, and earth. Statistics are not kept in an outlawed sport, so there's no way to track injury rates and fatalities. We do know that the dangers are very real. Base jumping is illegal in all U.S. national parks, and the law carries heavy fines and sometimes jail time for anyone caught jumping in the parks. There it goes. This has created serious tension with base jumpers who believe it is their right as Americans to jump these amazing cliffs. So it was here at Yosemite in 1999, the base jumpers were finally going to be heard. This is the way grandmas spin their day off. <laughs> October 22nd, 1999. Over a hundred onlookers gather at the foot of El Capitan to watch five base jumpers leap from the edge. One of the jumpers was 59-year-old Jan Davis. Filming the event that day was Tom Sanders, a professional cameraman who'd shot aerial scenes for several James Bond movies. Go! Besides being one of the world's best free-fall cinematographers, he was also Jan's companion for the past 15 years. I saw a picture of Jan that day. Tell me a little bit about her outfit she was wearing. Well, Jan, Jan was a very entertaining woman and she, uh, she wore a prisoner's outfit because we've treated like prisoners. She was excited to be part of it and she was willing to know that she was gonna be arrested and fined and have her equipment confiscated, but it was worth the cause. So she was proud to be there, she was happy. The, the first three jumped, and it was a beautiful day. I just remember people were out in the meadow playing hacky sack. Someone was playing the guitar. It was, it was a real, it was just a good feeling. Then it was Jan's turn. We were videotaping it for uh, park purposes and Tom Sanders, and, and I was just out there. It was about a third of the way down, and her parachute didn't open, and then two-thirds of the way down. I thought, uh-oh. And then all of a sudden, it was just boom. The ground shook and car alarms went off. And, and my first thought was, OK, I just watched, watched her die. Jan Davis was dead. But the reasons why were unclear. And I didn't have any really inkling of fear that she was going to die on this jump. That was the furthest thing from my mind. It was, a, for her, technically a very safe base jump. Initially, it was a great jump. The initial free fall was great, but when she started to have problems either reaching the pilot chute, finding the pilot chute, or with her shoulder, she was just falling and falling. You know, then it was pretty much over.
The park's official investigation report stated that Jan's equipment did not function in the way it was designed to, resulting in her fatality. Well, she had guts, that's for sure. Yes, she did, but there's, there's so much more than just guts that it takes to launch yourself off a 3,000-foot cliff. Now, in her case, experience, skill, hundreds of jumps under her belt. That's why I'm confused about what went wrong. Was it pilot error? Were there contributing factors? I mean, how did things go bad that day? And I want to see what goes on in the mind of someone preparing to jump off of El Capitan. OK, well, you work on why they do it. I'm going to figure out how things went bad. What was the most critical mistake of that day? Jan chose to jump borrowed gear. 